fried egg with me using acrylics. The paints I'm using today are System 3 Acrylics by Daler Rowney. I'll be painting on Strathmore canvas panels using my favorite Velvet Touch brushes by Princeton. You can use any of your favorite palettes, but I'd recommend having a number of receptacles because you're gonna wanna mix up ample amounts of paint. I'm starting off by filling the top portions of my palette with all the colors that I think I'm going to be needing for my painting. Black, blue, green, orange, red, brown, and white. Today we'll be painting on these Strathmore canvas panels. They're great because they're compact and they're not overly expensive. So they're really good for experimenting and trying out new mediums. I've also got a mechanical pencil and eraser, but any drawing medium will work just fine. To begin, I'm just going to sketch in the basic shapes of my egg, thinking about what's going to look best compositionally on this rectangular canvas. You definitely don't have to get too detailed here. We're just putting down the basic shapes. I'm starting off using this three quarter inch wash brush by Princeton uh, Velvet Touch. These are fantastic brushes. And this is going, I'm going to use this to create a wash that I'm going to cover my canvas with. So you can see here that I'm mixing together yellow and brown to just make a nice ochre tone. I don't want it to be too dark or too light. And then using water, I thin it out to quite a thin consistency. The reason you want it thin is that you want to be able to brush it across your entire canvas, but have it thin enough that it will A, dry quickly, but also leave some of your underpainting showing through. For my background color, I've mixed up some black and blue and white just to make kind of a slate gray color. And I'm beginning, this is going to be my background color. So I'm going to cover the whole background in this slate gray color. And you can see as I paint, sometimes a bit of that background is showing through. I'm gonna try to get pretty good coverage, but if I don't cover all, some of that ochre color will show through and that's okay. These Daler Rowney paints are actually really smooth and creamy and they just slide on really well. They have great coverage. Moving on, I'm using a number eight Filbert. These are, this is a great size for coverage and I'm going to mix up a kind of off-white color. It's got white, a little bit of green and a little bit of yellow in there. So as I put it down compared to the yellow, you're going to see that it looks quite white. But the reason you don't want to use a solid white here is that we're actually wanting this color to have a little bit more depth so that when we want to add highlights at the end, there's going to be able to have some contrast. So you're just going to continue laying down that off-white creamy color till you get some really good coverage over the entire shape of the egg. Now, because I want a little bit more precision and control, I'm using a number four round, and I'm going to pick up some black, and I'm going to line along the edge of the egg where the cast shadow will fall. This will give the egg a lot more dimension instead of reading as something flat. This shadow falls on the side opposite of the light source. Now using that same brush, I'm mixing a bit of that ochre paint with a bit more brown, and I'm just going along the edges of the egg, kind of to give it that cooked look where it gets brown along the edges. Next, I'm mixing just a, a darker kind of grayish green color, adding some shadows to the egg, um, again, thinking about like where the light source is and if there's any little bubble shapes or um, odd, odd shapes uh, on the egg that just to add a little bit of interest and make it look mm, not so perfect. To make that egg yolk begin to pop and have some more dimension, I'm going ar around the outside of it with a orangey brown color. Um, it's once you add that down, it's just going to really start to make the egg look like it's got a roundness of shape. And now I'm coming in with a dark ochre color 
and I'm just going to start thinking about where the darkest parts of the eggs are going to be. Even though this yolk is yellow, uh, that the sides where the light isn't hitting it directly are going to be darker. And I'm really kind of playing that up with some darker oranges, reds. You can kind of play around with mixing those colors. You can see I'm laying in a few different layers so that I can really give it some dimension. And now we get to round it out with those highlights that are going to come on the side of where the direct light is hitting it. And you can think about, you know, the shape of these highlights. They're going to run the shape of the egg yolk, so they're, they're going to be curved. And you can blend them in. Um, there's often not just one shape, there's multiple shapes. If there's like a window casting light, it might have kind of a, a window shape to it with the panes showing. This highlight is extremely important because it's going to really give that rounded shape that you want your egg yolk to have. And surprisingly, there's even going to be a bit of a highlight that falls along the shadowed edge, um, just a little bit with reflected light. Now comes the really fun part where you get to add all those pure white highlights to the off-white egg so that the surface really has shine to it. One of the finishing touches that really brings these eggs to light is to add these bubbles caused by the butter. And with a really small brush, the smallest you can find, you're just going to come in as delicately as you can without putting too heavy uh, paint on your brush. And you're just gonna lightly draw in these circles wherever you want to. You can spread them out over the surface of the egg. And don't forget to add a little highlight of reflected light uh, that really makes those bubbles have some dimension. And there we go, a very realistic fried egg that you can paint by yourself at home.